Well, they sure want vSplash dead, don't they? Patch notes for version 3.0 have just dropped, and from the looks of it, there ain't much to say. Besides informing us about the new stuff they added, the devs didn't change too much at all about the main sub and special weapons, but regardless, these changes seem quite interesting, so let's check them out. Starting off, the devs doubled the amount of damage Big Sweet Roller can deal to non-player objects like splash walls, umbrellas, etc. when striking them with ink. Not sure about direct hit with Big Sweet though. It's basically Object Shredder on crack without using Object Shredder, but I doubt more people will start using Big Swig Roller in its current state, even with this new balance, especially considering its dismal kit at the moment. Moving on, they increased the amount of time to start recovering ink after using Burst Bomb by 0.16 seconds. This comes in conjunction with Trizuka, Inkjet, and Ultra Stump now being able to deal more damage to the crab tank. So, if we round this up, the devs have thought about nerfing the Vanilla variant of splash matic without hard nerfing the main weapon, because these balances are clearly aimed at making the splash unviable without destroying the main weapon itself. As discussed in a previous video, it's kinda hard to balance the splash matic without either making an end zap duplicate or making the weapon crap. And to say it like that, I'm sorry, given that this weapon was designed as such from the beginning of Splatoon 1. And yet, interestingly enough, I found that the weapon used to deal 26 of damage per shot in the beginning of Splatoon 1 before getting adjusted to 28. So without making it a 5 shot kill weapon, I'm now interested in exploring the kill potential of splash matic with a reduced damage output as it might become more difficult for the weapon to kill effectively with less damage especially given that the base variant relies on Burst Bomb to finish off the enemy. This is bound to make Splash users be more cautious about ink consumption given that it's now taking more time to start recovering ink after using Burst Bomb. Granted, this Burst Bomb nerf is pretty much gonna affect all weapons equipped with this sub-weapon, but then again, every current weapon featuring Burst Bomb is already a threat in itself and paired with Burst Bomb. I mean, we got Carbon Deco, Splatana Wiper, Mini Splatling, as they pretty much operate the same way as V Splash to finish off the enemy with a Burst Bomb, and so does L3 Nozomo's D in previous games. I was being concerned about this burst bomb nerf, but Nah, I don't really feel so bad in the end. On the same subject, this patch shows they also thought of nerfing Crab Tank again without hard nerfing the special itself. In this case, they haven't touched this special, they just made other specials deal more damage to Crab Tank, just like they did with Baller back in Splatoon 2. That way, none of the weapons featuring Crab Tank will be directly affected, and instead of nerfing the special itself, they are giving more power to other weapons and specials to combat Crab Tank, which I'm pretty satisfied in the end. But I think they need to push further in that direction and give more power to all specials and more weapons against Crab Tank. They increased the effectiveness curve of Special Power Up for Killer Whale 5.1, obviously without increasing the effectiveness of the maximum amount, but I don't think this is gonna help this special counter Crab Tank if it's not effective enough. At best, Killer Whale is useful to make Crab Tank move, but it still takes some time before it starts firing by itself. It's still a nice buff, but there's not much to say about this kind of buff in general. For the special points requirement, yes, that's it for main sub and special weapons. They brought Aerospray MG, ends up 85, then yeah, Tri Sasha and Tri Stringer from 190 to 180, and Ballpoint Splatling from 200 to 190. Lastly, the devs also planned on changing the level layout of these maps in these modes in order to reduce the impact of long range weapons. One of the main issues of Splatoon 3 was that this game was more lenient towards backliners, especially Elite Eaters, because of how they can reach all corners of the maps in just a few spots. This issue stems from the maps being shorter and or having a view that's too far and wide open from sniping spots, allowing the backliners to have a wide the range of action and more easy in taking out their enemies. I believe they're gonna adopt this design philosophy from now on as they've already started implementing measures to block the backliner's line of fire on crucial spots in Umami rooms, so we can expect something similar on future maps. Then again, I'm hoping they add flanking routes as well in the future. That's gonna be it for the patch notes. Again, there are not too many changes, but there are impactful changes nonetheless. Is Scrap Tank dead? At that point, I don't think so. It's being undermined by multiple stuff, like giving more power to other weapons to take down crab or changing the map layout to block its line of fire. Essentially, this patch is clearly made to undermine Vanilla splash matic in many aspects without touching the weapon itself, but the changes that they made were also made to counter other problems that were present in the game along the way, like the backliner's line of fire on the maps, as well as the over-reliance on Burst Bomb. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the patch notes. Hope you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. This was Star Sonic, and I'll see you in the Inkopolis Plaza. Peace!